Flashback. Interior, safe house. Star Rover's room. Night. Seven-year-old Star Rover sits cross-legged on the floor. A hollow loneliness etched into his young features. The muted colors of cartoon images flicker across his TV. As he absentmindedly strokes Tiny, his terrier companion... He grasps the St. Christopher medallion hanging around his neck, squeezing it tightly, as if willing to blaze it with life. But it remains dull, lifeless, like him. Jimmy, Jimmy, where are you? His eyes well up as he glances around the stark, empty room. There's no one else here, just me and Tiny. I wish, I wish I had someone to talk to. As if in answer... The cartoon abruptly glitches. Fractured images pixelate before coalescing into the face of Teddy, 12 years old, his gaze locking intently on Star Rover. Hey, kid, nice metal. At least a part of it. Used to be mine, you know. This is yours? Teddy nods. Do that room, too. Once upon a time. Before they lock me up in this whatever you want to call it. Where do you live now? A strange, hollow look crosses Teddy's face. Nowhere. Nowhere real, anyway. I'm just a remnant. Some fragmented code where they stuck what's left of me. Star clutches Tiny even tighter. Are... are you all alone? Nah, there's others like me. Trapped extra-dimensional waywards. A flicker of hope sparks in Star Rover's eyes. Is Jimmy there with you? Teddy shakes his head, perplexed. Who's Jimmy? I don't know any- The image shudders. Teddy's form flickers in and out like a faulty hologram projection. Jimmy's not a kid. I've never seen him except in this weird dream I had once. I drew his picture. Well, let's see. The sketch star shows Teddy looks a bit otherworldly. Wait, I know that face. Who is he, Teddy? I'm not sure, Star. I've seen him before in my own dreams. He's connected to all of this somehow, but I don't know how. The TV image starts to fade. Listen, Star, be careful with this Jimmy guy. I don't know if he's a friend or foe, but there's something about him. Something powerful. Teddy, how can you be nowhere? You must be somewhere. We're out there, Star. They sent us out on a faraway journey. The screen starts breaking up. Don't go. Please, stay with me. Teddy's gone. Please, Teddy, come back. But he's still gone. Star cradles Tiny and cries. Cool dog. Star looks up. Teddy's back on TV. She's Tiny. Seth gave her to me. That little guy's still around? He used to follow me around like a lost puppy when we were kids. Seth? But he's a grown-up. I guess I've been away a while. Wish I could be where you are. Can you come back from wherever you are? I don't know. None of us do. No hope for us. We're all in purgatory. What's that? Kind of in between. Not really alive, not in heaven. Just in between. I'd give anything to be where you are. A pounding at the door startles both of them. Star, open this door right now. That Roberta? Listen, Star, I can't stay patched in. Teddy's face dissolves. The door slams open. Dr. Blaine finds Star Rover standing motionless, staring blankly at the static on the TV screen. Star. Star, are you all right? Star doesn't respond, his gaze fixed on something unseen. Dr. Blaine cautiously approaches him, waving her hand in front of his face, trying to elicit a reaction. But Star remains unresponsive. Suddenly, a flicker of movement catches Dr. Blaine's eye. Star's posture shifts subtly. His shoulders relax, his head tilts slightly to the side. A mischievous look, a casual, playful stance, and a hint of a smile. The way he runs his hand through his hair, the slight bounce in a step as he walks toward her, it's... Teddy? Star's voice changes tone. He's channeled Teddy. Roberta, it's been a long time. Dr. Blaine's eyes well up in tears. She reaches out her hand, trembling, as she touches Star's face. Teddy, is it really you? The TV flickers. Dr. Blaine turns and sees Teddy back now, on the TV. It's me, Roberta. I'm here. 
Roberta jumps back, shocked. Teddy, I'm sorry. I had no choice. Teddy raises his hand for Roberta to stop. He reaches out to hug her. Star hugs her. Roberta, I need you to listen to me. Us Christopher Project kids, we're in trouble. What do you mean? What's happening? We're tired of being trapped in this endless void, this nothingness. We want to be free. Dr. Blaine and Teddy's eyes meet. And if we can't be free? What, Teddy? You know I'd do anything, anything to save you. You have to stop. Maybe I can... Roberta, the kids are waking up. I have to go. Wait, Teddy, please don't go. But Teddy's image on the TV screen flickers and fades. Star pulls away. Remember, I'll always love you. Teddy, don't go, please. I need to find a way to save you. But the TV screen abruptly switches back to the cartoon, the colors and the sounds jarring in contrast to the intense emotional moment that just transpired. Star blinks, looking confused and disoriented, as if waking from a dream. Dr. Blaine stares at him. Now they both seem aware of what happened. Roberta races out of the room. Star waits for Teddy to return to his TV screen. When he doesn't, he weeps as Tiny consoles him.